Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head over to Estonia once again and we're going to have a look at yet another of the beers that I brought back with me from my recent trip over there. So for this one, we are going to return to a brewery that's featured on the channel once before, but interestingly, that was actually part of an out and about video and it's the first time on the channel, if memory serves me correctly, that I've gone from visiting a brew pub to actually doing a sit down review of one of their beers so this is pretty cool I have to say I'm certainly looking forward to this one so the beers that I had from these guys in my out and about video were pretty nice the one that we're going to try today is a style that I haven't had from them yet but this is supposed to be quite a nice beer and it's also a style that I very much enjoy so I do have high hopes for this hopefully it makes for an interesting review hopefully you guys enjoy my take on it and hopefully it's a good beer so let's crack on with this one then and see how we go for this review then like I said we are going to go to Estonia we're going to go to Tallinn the capital city in the northwest of the country and we're sticking to the center of the city for this review actually so this is going to be my first sit down review of a beer from Humalakoda this one is the 13 wine barley's edition. So the 13, the regular 13 is a barley wine. This is also a barrel a barley wine of course, but just a red wine barley's edition and apparently it's aged for 14 months. So that is quite interesting actually. But of course, I bought this bottle when I was in the Humalakoda brew pub uh, next to the central station in Tallinn and this one came at the recommendation of the girl behind the bar and she was quite good at advising me on the different beers to try actually so I do certainly trust her word actually so um, yeah looking forward to this and I've not had an Estonian barley wine in quite a wee while if memory serves me correctly so curious to see what this has in store for us so let's go for it as always with my reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the video description below that's the brewery website the link to my other reviews that I've done or my other videos featuring Humala Coda as I should say because we've done the out and about video so do make sure you check that one out but there's all the usual social media down there if you want to see more reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into to the home page and search for beer based on country city state county province prefecture or whatever it is you happen to be interested in do check out the playlist of beers from different countries there is one there for all the estonian beers that i've reviewed for you that's being added to whenever i get the opportunity and as i said the estonian beers are very good so i try to do that as often as i can but as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review it's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Humala Coda then, on to my brewery notes. So Humala Coma, uh, Humala Coda, bleh, couldn't say that properly, Humala Coda is a brew pub based in the Balti Yama Turg in Tallinn, which you'll find right next to the Tallinn Central Railway Station. But the company was founded back in 2017 by four friends, Harry, Marek, Tonis and Christian. And these four guys have known each other since primary school and they even went to study law together at university. But they all now work in different fields and out of the four, it's only Harry that is involved in the day-to-day -day workings of the brew pub. But since 2002, this group have also owned the Hell Hunt Bar and Restaurant and they said that they had great fun running this business and they all had a love of tasting and drinking different craft beers so they decided that it would be fun to kind of add to their business and start their own brew pub and that is of course what they did with Humala Coda. But the brewery itself has a 500 litre brew kit and six 600 litre fermentation tanks. If you go to the brew pub, you'll see them just behind the bar. Actually, they do have some glass windows where you can see them actually doing the brewing process, which is quite cool. As I say, check out my out and about video that I did and you'll see what this place looks like. But... Um, the brewer at the brewery is Jan Christian Unt, who has a background as a home brewer, and he actually paused his master studies to come on board with the company and be their brewer full time. So pretty cool, actually. But the name Humala Coda um, apparently is a bit of a play on words from the Estonian language. It only really works in the Estonian language, actually. So for a church in Estonian, they say Humala Coda, which literally translates into English as the house of God. So the word for hops is Humal, and thus Humala Coda literally means the house of hops. But it's got this kind of, you know, Christian, godly sort of connotation to it. So, um, yeah, that is that's 
the meaning behind the name. But that is all I can really tell you about Humala Coda for the moment. Uh, a big thank you to Harry Bakeman, one of the owners. Um, it was actually a little bit difficult to find information on this brewery. What I had to do was contact M. Parrell from Poyala and I just remembered in a conversation that I'd had with him that he had said he was friends with the owners of Humala Coda because he was asking where I'd been in Tallinn and things and I just remembered he knows one of the owners so I was able to uh, to email him and ask him can you forward my uh, my email address to um, to the guys at Humala Coda and that was how I got in touch with Harry and then Harry told me all the information that I've just shared with you there so a big shout out to Harry Bakeman from the brewery as well for making this review possible I guess we could say so um, yeah as I say that is all I can really tell you about Humala Coda for the moment if you want to learn more about these guys you can of course check out the brewery website you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on and you can check out the Wait Beer untapped and beer advocate pages to learn a little bit more about all the different beers that these guys have done i actually forgot to look up how many beers they've done on the uh, the untapped page but they do have beers if you look at the hell hunt website as well they do have um hell hunt and uh, humala coda beers and I, th I think they are different recipes actually because they're list they were listed as different things when i checked them out on um when i checked them out on uh, untapped earlier so um yeah that as i say is all i can tell you so i guess we can get on and have a little taste of the beer itself then so before we do that i'll just let you have a little look at the artwork on this one before we open up there you can see the barley wine satan which is kind of cool <laughs> but yeah number 13 unlucky so i guess that is the uh, the thing with this beer i think you know it's meant to be 13 and satanic which is kind of cool i guess that goes into the whole kind of you know um christian godly type uh, connotations that the name Humala Coda has. You can see it there. It is pretty cool. Uh, but just a plain bottle cap on this one. From what I understand, this was bottled on a, I think this is bottled on a very, very um, small scale. Um, but Odra Vein, um, I think that is just red wine in Estonian, if I remember correctly. Um, Estonian, of course, is a very, very complex language. It's part of the Finno Uruk family. So Finnish, Estonian, and Hungarian. So it's, it's kind of a crazy language. But um, yeah, very difficult one to learn. But it is a 330 milliliter bottle. And when I was in the bar, I paid either eight or nine euros for this beer. And considering what it is, I think that's pretty decent, to be honest with you. I, I think it was nine euros, actually. So nine euros is roughly about eight pounds sterling. Um, it's about maybe ten dollars fifty, something like that in Swedish kroner. It's, yeah, about 90, 90 Swedish kroner, I guess. And yeah, I think that gives you all the kind of currency conversions that the audience would need for the moment. But yeah, like we said, a 13% barley wine, this one, aged in red wine barrels. Let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the taste. And I'm just very curious to see what this has in store for us. So let's do it. Oh, a little bit of smoke on the opening there. But yeah, we can get this out and into the glass. This looks as if it is going to be very nice, incidentally. So there we go. Very dark looking barley wine, actually, which is kind of interesting. So there we go. Little bits of sediment on the bottom of the bottle there, but not overly much, I have to say. But um, yeah, this is pretty impressive in terms of its um, in terms of its colour. So if we shine the light through this one, this is a very dark, uh, let me just see, maybe I can put the light up another notch. Yeah, maybe you can see it a little bit better now. That's a bit better of a light level for this video, definitely. But yeah, as you can see, this beer has poured a lovely, very dark kind of ebony colour. If we shine the light through it, it gives you a little bit of a dark kind of chestnutty edge. Now remember, the colour of your beer depends on one, the type of malts that you use. This determines the magnitude of the colour. Two, the length of your wort boil is also going to play a role in this. The longer you boil the wort, the more the sugars caramelise and thus you get a darker colour of beer. Uh, when it comes to barley wines, that is quite important because quite often barley wines will undergo very long wort boils, you know, about you know, six hours and things like this. Six hours isn't uncommon for a barley wine. And just going by the colour of this one, I suspect this beer has had quite a long uh, boil, to be honest with you. I would not be surprised in the slightest if it has. This is one of the darker barley wines that I've come across in recent times, as I would say, but, you know, you can't, I, I think I have seen 
one or two that have been this dark before but to me i would guess this has quite a bit of darker big you know caramelly brown sugary malts in it but i would suspect that it's also had a very long uh, wort oil. Now the other thing to remember as well is that adjuncts and barrel aging can play a role when it comes to determining the colour of your beer. Usually you only have to care about those things when it comes to like sour beers but when this is a red wine barrel I would say that most likely when this is a more kind of brown sugary beer rather than having the black malts and things as you would have with imperial stouts that probably could play a role in determining the colour of this beer as well. But you can see that when we poured this one it did have a very kind of light layer of a sort of fawn coloured head there were a few kind of wispy things there but remember this beer is 13 percent abv so head retention is going to be pretty low on it to be quite honest with you the head retention won't be too much but you can see there is a little bit of a kind of fawny ring just around the edge of the glass and um, one or two little carbonation things visible in this but to be quite honest not really a lot visible in it uh, at all to be honest with you so yeah one or two little bubbles sticking to the side of the glass and a few wee ones going up towards the bottom of the head there but overall, it looks pretty nice, I have to say. I do like how this beer goes together. And as I say, the only surprising thing about this is that it is su uh, such a dark barley wine in a sense. But yeah, let's have a look at the aroma then and see how we get on. I don't think we can really say any more about the appearance of this one. So yeah, aroma time. Oh, ho, 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 ho. That's, this smells like a beast. This is going to be an absolute beast of a beer. So, <laughs> straight away, you can smell the big barley wine characters out of this. You know, those big brown sugars. It's got a wee bit of breadiness to it, but it's got a hell of a lot of leathery character. You can smell that woody, leathery backbone to this one, which is great. And it's actually got a good bit of a cakey, fruity kind of thing to it. So I think this is a very, very long boil barley wine, actually. I think that's the route we're going down with this one. The barrel-aged notes are actually quite subtle in this, which is... Um, which is really interesting. So um, yeah, I think this should be this should be really interesting. It says on the side here that this one is best before the 31st of the 12th, 2023. That's another thing I maybe should have pointed out with this. I'm not sure exactly when they would have bottled this, but a barley wine will last for quite some time actually. But um, I think this will be pretty nice. So let's look at it. Um, the aroma is lovely though. So backbone of the beer unquestionably is a very smooth oaky wood you do get a little bit of slight spiciness out of the wood actually but you also get a wee bit of uh, you know you do get quite a bit of smoothness and a very slight hint of vanilla if i was smelling this beer without knowing what it was i actually might just think it was a bit you know bourbon barrel aged or something like that you know the winey notes i don't find to be too obvious in this one but that might just be due to the sheer density of the brown sugars in this beer I mean, you don't get a beer that's that colour. You don't get a barley wine that's that colour without using some really dark malts or doing a hell of a, a long boil. And like I say, you can smell the sort of leatheriness in this one as well. And to me, that's a sign of a very long boil. Um, so yeah, the backbone of this one, lovely, smooth, slightly dry, woody character. There's a wee touch of a kind of slightly spicy hint to it, but that works. And then you've got, you know, a little bit of a vanilla character in this one as well. You can smell some of the kind of grapey, vinous, red winey notes, which um, I do like. Um, yeah, those um, go together really, really nicely. In that, I have to say, it's um, the, the, the barrel aged note in this beer is really nice and just quite subtle. Uh, I think they've got the balance of this pretty nice actually. And uh, the other thing that I do like about this, you know, this is only a 500 litre brew kit that they're using. So you can smell the sort of rawness of the beer, if that makes sense. And you often find this with like very small brew pubs and very small scale breweries. You still get a little bit of that kind of raw, yeasty, home brewery type vibe to this. And you can get a little bit of that out of this beer. So that's something that I do enjoy when you go to very small breweries. Um, but this smells absolutely lovely. So on top of that woody note that we're looking at, you can smell a lovely bit of bread crust. You do get a bit of a kind of um, bread crusty note out of this. There's a lot of brown bread in this beer for me. And I don't know if I could quite describe it as like a German rye bread, but it certainly has some of the kind of sweetness that you would expect of that, like a, a nice big German rye bread. And the bread crusty notes are kind of like that as well. It's just that sort of very sweet 
brown bready character. But like I said, there's a lot of brown sugar in this one. And it's a kind of highly caramelized, treacly molasses sort of thing there. But that said, you do get a lovely kind of sweeter caramel out of it. But at the same time, you get that really leathery, uh, sweet caramel in this one. There are one or two little McFitties digestive biscuity elements to the beer as well. But yeah, the brown sugars in this beer are absolutely lovely and I think that's really what the, the brown sugars are the kind of central point of this beer for me and they are what really um, kind of grounds the beer if that makes sense they're the things that hold everything together um, so this is really very very interesting actually I think this is an awesome this is going to be a quite a special beer now the other thing I should point out about this which I forgot to mention earlier is that um, I bought this beer I think it was September I think it was September 2020 that I was in Estonia so yeah September 2020 that I was in Estonia so I've had this in the bottle for about a year uh, and it was pretty nice it, it, it was it, you know it, it will brain's not working it will age quite nicely at that time and I think it was it, I think she's the girl told me it was about a year old at the time that I bought it as well so this is aged for two years and you know barley wines are one of these beers that age really well so when we go on to talk about the hoppy character of this um, barley wines, you know, the hoppy character will drop out of them, but you can still get a really nice bit of hoppy resonance in this one, if that makes sense. There's a wee bit of smooth earthiness in there, a wee bit of herbal character, some nice floral notes, a little bit of a kind of lighter, grassy sort of thing in there. And um, yeah, I do think that goes together uh, really well. So yeah, lovely little bit of lighter, kind of grassy sort of thing to this um, to this beer big kind of floral components behind it as well but they've got a bit of, you know they've got a real depth to them but otherwise you've got a kind of smooth earthy and slightly herbal thing to the beer which i really like but this beer what you will find with it is it does have a lovely kind of cakey note to it you do get that big sort of fruit cakey kind of thing out of this but the fruity side of the beer as we say you've got a little bit of that venice red wine kind of grapey quality to it but on top of that there's a lot of fruity note in there i certainly get a wee bit of a kind of raisiny character absolutely um, but there's some kind of plummy notes in there, but I get a lot of dried kind of prune and fig and stuff like this as well. Um, but you've also got some more oily black currenty uh, notes out of this one. So yeah, there's a lot of lovely kind of dried fruity character to this beer. So yeah, this one goes together very, very well, I think, in terms of its aroma. So as I always say, take a bit of time to enjoy that aroma before you get stuck into it. But I think it's about time that we taste this beer now and see how we go. So yeah, this one is the 13 Red Wine Barley's Edition from Humala Koda, how, the, the godly house of hops, I guess we could call this brewery, uh, in central Tallinn over in Estonia. 13% Red Wine Barley's Barley Wine. Let's get stuck into this. Slandia, Skull, cheers, and as they say in Estonia, Tervi Six. Let's do this. Oh, yeah. It's quite nice, actually. Um, that is... That is pretty interesting now first impression of this i think part i think there's chocolate malt in this i think they have put a bit of chocolate malt in this and that would explain as well the darkness of this beer there, there's chocolate i'm 100 percent sure there's chocolate malt in this um there is definitely some of that in here um or something very similar so when we're talking about barley wines you also need to consider whether it's an american barley wine or it's an english barley wine the english ones tend to be a bit more kind of bready and grainy and toasty and stuff like this whereas the american ones tend to be a bit more kind of oily sweet and fruity if that makes sense there's a big difference in the fruits as well the english one tends to be a little bit more kind of dry fruity the american one tends to be more rounded and oily and sweet in terms of its fruity character for me this is an english barley wine i'd say this is more of a, a kind of english barley wine but it's at that it's quite a bready cakey barley wine i think that's fair to say about this one Maybe it's got the fruitiness of an American barley wine. It's maybe got the oily, fruity character of an American barley wine. But I actually find this one to be a little bit more, because of the dryness and sort of graininess it has, this is a little bit more like an English barley wine. But I certainly like how this, um, how this goes together. So, yeah, it works. It works, this one. So, thumbs up to Humala Koda for this. And as I say, it's just nice to do a sit-down review 
um, for these guys. It's not often that you get to do it this way around. Visit a brew pub, get one of their beers to take away and then sit down and do a kind of in-depth review. So this is pretty awesome. Um, but yeah, on uh, let's just start with this beer the way we always do then. So backbone of the beer, middle third and back third of your palate, you can feel that nice, smooth, oaky character there. That blankets the middle of your palate, goes on to the back part of your tongue as well. Um, it really works. Um, towards the front of that uh, of the middle third of your palate, I think there is a wee bit of um, you do get a nice little bit of a kind of sweet vanilla kind of note out of the beer. Absolutely, you do get a little bit of that in the woody side of things. But as you go further back into the back of the middle third and into the back third of your palate, it's more of a kind of dry. Um, oaky woody character that you get out of this one so yeah I like how that goes together for sure so that's the backbone of the beer but on top of that and when you have the liquid on your tongue you can really get a little bit of that it's kind of like a dried grapey character there's a wee fly going around there which is annoying me I think you can see it because of the 4k but um, yeah you can see um, you can get that nice kind of dried red, great that dried purpley grapey note sitting on top of the dry woody character in there. So I do like that about the beer. That the red wine barrel aging is a bit more obvious in the flavour than it was in the aroma. That's safe to say. So yeah, backbone of this beer, the smooth wood, a little bit dry, a little bit vanilla towards the front of the middle third of your palate. But let's focus on the, the middle third of your palate for the moment. So on top of that kind of grapey layers it's the, the grapey note the grapey notes are almost infused into the wood i think that's the best way to kind of describe it but the wood is the the backbone the linchpin of this beer but on top of that woody character in the middle third of your palate you've got like a sort of dry chocolatey note there it's like that kind of chocolate powder that you use for um it's like that chocolate powder that you use for, you know, like Nesquik and chocolate milk and things like that. It's like that, but a slightly higher cocoa percentage. It gives you a wee bit more kind of bitterness and dryness there. So that's sitting on top of the, the woody notes for me. Then on top of that, you've got a bit of a kind of toasty, bread crusty character. You certainly get that. Then you've got that kind of brown, uh, kind of rye bready layer in this one that sort of sweet german rye ready character that you know that's the middle third of your palate with this beer there's pardon me more layers to it than that right enough and um, but we start to get into the sweet layers once we go beyond the bread definitely so yeah on top of the on top of that there's a nice um on top of that you have a very good um, brown sugary element to this one, so you can feel in the middle third of your palate. It's it's in the middle third of your palate. You have this um, oily circle. You have this really oily circle in there, um, and that's where you get all the brown sugary notes there. So you can feel that caramel, treacle, molasses sort of thing just sitting on top, uh, sitting on top of that. Uh, bready character on your tongue and you can feel that the the treacle molasses note is actually very very leathery and again to me that indicates a long boil because you know the longer you boil the wort the more these brown sugary notes just kind of caramelize together and you get that big thick leathery kind of note out of them but if you go into the dead center of your palate you do get a little bit of a sweet caramel but remember all of these brown sugars are covering up the booze of the beer when this is 13 percent abv it is a bit of a monster in a sense but potentially when you go out to the extremities of that middle third of your palate you've got a wee bit of a kind of you do have a little bit of a sort of bready and um, mcvitie's digestive kind of thing to this beer so that absolutely comes into play just a little bit of that biscuity character but i think to be honest that covers uh, what we need to say about the middle third of your palate so let's go on to the um to the back third then so border region between middle third and back third of your palate you do get quite a bit of a bready build up in there a big brown bready note lots of kind of grainy aspects to it as well but the back third of your palate as we said you've got the woody notes in there which are a bit drier and spicier and um, on top of that you get a little bit of the you don't get so much of the grape in there but on top of that you get the bread crust the brown bread crust there you get a bit more chocolate sitting on top of the brown bread crust i think on that back layer too and again these are a bit more bitter because it's the back of the palate the sweeter brown bread which again is a bit more grainy and then on top of that you get more 
of the kind of yeasty character there. And the yeasty notes in this beer strike me as being quite dense. That sort of really thick, almost chewy white bread, uh, sorry, brown bread dough kind of thing that you're getting on the back third of your palate. Um, but when this is 13%, you've seen how kind of hazy and stuff this beer is actually. This isn't just due to the colour. You can see that this one is a big hazy beast and it will be unfiltered and all of this as well. The yeast is playing quite a big role in the, the flavour of this beer without doubt. And as I say, this is quite a small scale one. So you do get that kind of raw home brewed type vibe to uh, to this beer, which is, is quite nice. It's a nice change of pace from all these kind of larger brewed commercial beers. A commercial craft beer, I guess we could say that we've had. So these guys are only brewing five hundred liters, which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, you can feel that this one, it's a big bready, but still really nice and sweet and highly caramelized beer. This I would say, you know, you get these. The brown sugars, I think, the further you go into the aftertaste, they do kind of sweeten up, but you still get that leathery, woody dryness just lingering there in this beer. So I do like how um, how it goes together. The malty side of this one is really um, is is really very very nice. It um, it works. So yeah, and this gets a big thumbs up for me on the malty and yeasty side of things. It is like a proper big kind of homebrew um, homebrew barley wine. This which is cool. But let's focus on the hoppy side of the beer then. So back corners of the palate, you do have uh, quite a little bit of earthiness out of this one. The other thing to remember about this beer is that when it must be about two years old or something, this one, it says 2023, you know, we're in 21 now. So maybe this was brewed in 19. So I'm not 100% sure about this. I think this beer is maybe two, three years old, something like that. It's been sitting for a while anyway. Um, but the hoppy character will drop out of these beers and you won't have the same IBU and bitterness and things. But there's a nice little bit of earthiness to this one. As you go further forward, it's a little bit herbal. And then as you push towards the front corners of the palate, you do get a little bit of a kind of floral note there. Then around the front curve of the palate, it's a little bit lighter and grassy. There is a teeny, teeny little bit of zestiness in there. But yeah, the hoppy character is kind of more smooth and taking a back seat rather than anything else. But let's focus on the front third of your palate then and the fruity aspects of the beer. So border region between front third and middle third of your palate, again, you get a bit of a bready buildup in there. But what I would say about it this time is that it's actually quite cakey, like a sort of sponge cakey kind of thing, dark sort of sponge cake. You can also feel that form in the base of that um, front third of your palate. So um, yeah, I do like that about this beer, the big kind of cakey backbone that it has on the, the front third of your palate. On top of that, of course, you've got that nice oily bubble where those juicy fruity esters kind of roll their way out of the beer. And this one really does have quite a little bit of a kind of dried fruit character as well. So yeah, um, big dried fruity notes kind of dominating with this one. And I think the winey character, the sort of wine barrel aging stuff does come out a little bit more the further forward you're on the palate as well. But let's break down the fruity notes of this beer. So when you go into the, the aftertaste, as I say, it really, it's dried fruit all the way, but in the beginning, it's a little bit more oily and diverse. So when you take the beer in, there is a little bit of a kind of raisiny sharpness to it. But underneath that, you get a bit of an oily plum. You get quite a lot of that dried kind of pruny character as well. You get some dried, you know, sultan. I get quite a bit of sultan out of this one. So dried white green grapes um, as well. And that sits underneath that on top of the kind of cakey layer. But as you move further forward on that front third of your palate, you get some juicy kind of figgy notes in there. It's quite dry. As we say, and then as you push towards the front, part of that front uh, third of your palate, it becomes more kind of black currant. It, there's a bit of black currant, that slightly softer black currant underneath and a bit more of an oily blackberry sitting on top of that. So um, yeah, I think, it, um, I think it goes together um, really nicely in that sense. The fruity character in this beer has is, got a good balance between the kind of more dry and oily side of things, but it leans towards that drier um, side of the beer the further that you go into it. So it gets a big thumbs up from me on that side. So this, as I say, the, the dry fruity notes and the bready character are what really make this an English barley wine for me. I think we can round uh, off the tasting section of the video and say that. And the chocolatey notes that you get out of this, you do get that dry powdery kind of chocolatey thing in this. And I think that's what's contributing a lot to the colour.
this beer in the metal base. But yeah, we've said everything I think we need to say about the flavour of this beer. Let's round off the review with the mouthfeel then. So unquestionably, full-bodied beer. Pushing towards the top end of full-bodied, I would say, at that. Carbonation, very, very smooth in this one. Almost non-existent, actually, but it's a big, big, oily, slick beast of a thing, this. In terms of IBUs, I think this has got a little bit of IBU to it, maybe 40 50 at a push and I think that's coming from the malt base and the kind of chocolatey, grainy and woody side of the beer rather than anything else. Um, maybe it's dryness though, it's quite difficult sometimes to distinguish between bitterness and dryness so it gives the impression of maybe about 30 or 40 IBUs for sure but the malt base as we said is kind of nice and smooth and bready, there's a lot of kind of brown sugary notes to it, it's a bit sweet, there's a bit of toasty character to it as well, lots of cakey character also. Um, so there's quite a bit of dry smoothness to it, but there's also a lot of sweetness and you've got some lovely big kind of oily, dry, um, juicy fruity characters out of this one too. So it's got quite an oily but still dried fruity note to it. But overall, a really interesting beer this one and it's quite cool to have something like this to um, sit down and do a review of. The barrel aging notes, I think, take a bit of time to come out of this one. But you know, this is why I like longer reviews. You can sit down with the beer, you can mull it over and see how it evolves on the palate. I don't think it's all about impact tasting uh, for sure uh, when it comes to these, especially barley wines and Doppelbox and Scotch ales, you know, these more malty leaning beers. But lovely, lovely beer this. It gets a big thumbs up to me, uh, from me, I should say. Brain is not working, my English is terrible these days. But um, yeah, really, really nice beer, this one. So big th thumbs up to Humala Koda and thank you again to Harry for it, helping me out with the information on this beer. And to N at Koyala as well for putting me in contact with Harry in the first place. But uh, yeah, let's leave it there. So this one was the 13 Wine Barley's edition, a 13% Wine Barley's barley wine from Humala Koda in Tallinn the capital city of Estonia. Really cool to review this one for you. So yeah, thank you again for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Humala Koda as well. And uh, I will catch you guys again at some point very soon with another review. Thank you for watching. Check out my social media. Check out Humala Koda's social media and the Hellhunt social media. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Slanjit, Skull, cheers and terribly sex. Some more Estonian reviews to come of course as well.